It's the feeling like on the ground. Let's find out from a man who's over there right now as we welcome to Chalksport and Chalk Radio and to this show, I think, for the first time, Adam Hancock, top tennis journalist. Good morning, Adam. How are you doing, Macy? And happy new year, belatedly. Hello, happy new year. I'm all good, thank you, except for the cricket, which I'm, I'm just choosing to ignore at the moment. I think we should all do that. We're crossing line. I mean, the trouble is because England are batting. Every time I'm told you've got to go back to John Norman, our cricket editor, I know it ain't going to be good news, Adam. So let's talk about the tennis yeah. then. Not good news at the moment for Djokovic, not good news at the moment, certainly for his family. What is the strength of feeling like in Australia? Because initially, I think there were lots of comments saying to people, this is brass typical, allowing somebody, just because they're a big tennis and sporting superstar, to waive the rules. That has definitely not happened now, has it, Adam? No, no. So what, initially, when the news broke, um, and it kind of all started from that social media post that Djokovic did a couple of days ago, um, there really was a lot of anger. It was hard to kind of um, overstate how, how angry people were here. I mean, this is a country that has had incredibly strict rules uh, we've seen many Australians unable to enter their own country uh, during the pandemic. Lots of heartbreaking stories, people un unable to see family members before they suddenly passed away. So for Djokovic to arrive in the manner that he did, posting on social media, it wasn't a good look. And people reacted with a real amount of anger. You, you could feel it. Everyone was talking about it here. Social media was you know, rife with criticism of the authorities for allowing this to happen. Uh, Djokovic is a fairly controversial character in Australia, as it stands anyway. Um, he, he does have a lot of support here, but there are some people who aren't a massive fan of him. Um, Nick Kyrgios, one of the top Australian players, yeah. he um, is very outspoken against Djokovic. They have a bit of a rivalry, and, and Djokovic, um, Kyrgios has criticised him a lot, especially when it comes to COVID and you know his attitude towards COVID. Obviously, he had that tournament um, where a lot of people caught the virus uh, earlier last year. So I think over the last few days, opinion here, it's probably slightly shifted. Now he's actually here. I think people have kind of started to take the views like that, that, you know, he was given an exemption, rightly or wrongly. He was believed he had the correct information to get into the country. He's arrived into the country believing he'd get let in. And now he's kind of been put in a very strange situation where, you know, he's effectively locked up, waiting to find out his fate. So I think the longer it goes on and the longer he stays in the detention centre, and we've heard a lot today about the conditions there, they don't sound great. I think he might get a bit more sympathy, but I think there's still a lot of anger. Now, I understand his uh, legal team have challenged this decision by the Australian Border Force, and they've got a hearing at the Federal Circuit and Family Court of Australia scheduled for Monday. The Open itself starts yeah. on the 17th on that front. Um, I presume then, if this isn't resolved, after that hearing, or whenever they get their verdict handed down, He'll be, uh, if, if it goes against him, he'll have to leave the country. Full stop, simple as that. Yes, yeah, it would look that way. I mean, the tournament organisers for the Australian Open, they want this to be sorted by Tuesday, I believe, um, because they, they, you know, they need to sort out their schedule. They've got to find a replacement if Djokovic isn't able to play. Uh, the judge did reference that yesterday, but he did say, look, I understand the situation, but I'm not going to be hounded by the tennis authorities to get this sorted quickly. You know, we need to look into this properly. We need to go through the right process. Um, it's going to take a bit of time. So I think the judge is aware of, of the requirements of, you know, Djokovic's schedule, the Australian Open schedule, but he's by no means going to be rushed by it. So it will be interesting to see that if proceedings do drag on into Tuesday, for example, and even if he gets the result he wants, for example, he's allowed into the country, would it be too late in terms of the Australian Open? You would have to imagine they might try to adjust things a little bit. You know, he's obviously the defending champion. He's a huge name. They will want him to play at the tournament. Um, so, but it might be almost a race against the clock as much as it is a race against the lawyers to actually be allowed into Australia. Now, is it possible to explain um, simply what it is that's caused the Australians to act in this way? Because it just seems to me to be he's not, he's not satisfied them. He's due or, or able to claim an exemption. Is that right? So he's not got some kind of medical documentation? Is that what they're worried about? Yeah, so it hasn't really been revealed exactly what the problem is. As far as we know, the Tennis of Australia and the Victoria state government, uh, so remember Australia separated into states, there's a federal government, which is like the overarching government, but each state has their own sort of rules and regulations. And as far as we know, and what Djokovic said, is that he received the exemption to enter um, into Melbourne and compete in the Australian Open. And apparently about 26 uh, players and staff applied for these exemptions and around a handful were given out. But then when he arrived at the airport in Melbourne, the Australian Border Force were not happy 
with the situation, with the, with the evidence that he was providing for the exemption. And that's kind of the sticking point. Nobody is 100% sure exactly what the evidence that they wanted, why that evidence was enough for Victoria and Tennis Australia to grant an exemption, but it wasn't enough for the Australian border force to allow him in. And also why he was allowed to board the plane in the first place if he didn't seemingly have the correct documents needed to get into Australia. There was some talk yesterday that perhaps his team had also completed the wrong visa application, which wouldn't allow for a medical right. exemption. But that's kind of got lost in the whole story as well. Nobody is 100% sure. And I think that's what a lot of people would like to know now. They want to know what, is, what the exemption is and what has caused the problem. Because uh, that kind of feels like it's at the root of this issue. Until we know that information, we're very much just speculating on exactly what's happened. Okay, now we have also had a kind of diplomatic escalation to this, or at least diplomatic input. I've mentioned, I think you mentioned the Australian president. The deputy president was also fairly strident. It's Barnaby Joyce, who spoke to the BBC and said, he's taking the sovereign capacity of another nation for a joke. You can't just wander around the world thinking that because you're really rich, you're really above the laws of other, na of other nations, which then prompted, and I think this really is something out of the ordinary, a response from the Serbian president, a chap called Alexander uh, Vucic, who said, who said of Djokovic he was a victim of harassment, and that the whole of Serbia supported him. I mean, that is the kind of level now this is going to, because, of course, you know, we, you don't need me to remind you, folks, he's a globally renowned figure, Novak Djokovic, and yet this, and, and the Australian Open, a fantastic competition, and yet they didn't seem to be able to sort this out with him or his people beforehand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's become so much bigger than tennis now. It's not, it's not really a tennis story. It's no. almost a diplomatic story. The Serbians, very angry, as you said. A lot of strong comments from their president. The Home Affairs Minister here today, Karen Andrews, she's basically come out and said, look, if he wants to go home, he's free to leave. He doesn't have to sit and wait in the detention centre. As you mentioned, Scott Morrison, the Prime Minister, he came out yesterday pretty strong against Djokovic. It's hard to get away from the fact that there are, there are politics involved with this. Uh, we have got an election on the way in Australia. Um, the Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, he's faced a lot of criticism for his handling of the pandemic and keep it like his handling of the borders. Um, and he possibly sensed a shift in public mood um, a couple of days ago when, when we found out Djokovic was coming here. And it's hard to escape the fact that, you know, we were told a couple of players have been allowed exemptions. We haven't heard anything about their cases. Apparently a few are being investigated, but we don't know much about their cases. Whereas Djokovic's case, we know a lot yeah. about it and it's, it's everywhere. So it's hard to escape the fact that the, given how high profile he is and, you know, given the political nature here right now, with COVID, with the election looming, it's hard to escape the fact that, that this has become a diplomatic thing both within Australia and, and around the world. And I mentioned it's uh, you know very important for tennis, of course it is. Djokovic defending his uh, fourth Australian Open title, I think, in a row. But also it's important, it would be important this competition were to win it for him personally, wouldn't it, Adam? Yes, yes, absolutely. He's got, the, uh, he's got a chance to basically beat Roger Federer's Grand Slam titles record, get to 21. They're currently both tied on 20. Of course, Federer won't be here in Australia. So it's a tournament he's done very well in the past. Yeah. He performs very well. He likes playing in the night matches um, on, the big, on the big courts they have here. Uh, he often has thrilling matches. He's had some incredible five-set matches over the year over the years and he would be a strong favorite for this tournament um so i think personally as well for him he will really want to get in and play because if he's not allowed in now and he's not allowed to play it's going to put question marks over next year it's going to put question marks there's already talk about the french open coming up uh, later in the year it's going to really put him in a difficult position in terms of going forward and if he's able to compete so i think on a personal basis he's obviously probably going to be quite angry he's going to feel like he's got a point to prove He'll be desperate to play.